Slade Wilson and his newly discovered son Respawn are on the run from Talia Al Ghul in the shadows. What will happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Deathstroke Inc. issue number 8, a continuation of Shadow War, and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we check back on in with Angel Breaker, who I still maintain is the most anime-looking brand new Batman villain in a while. Her and the Assassins manage to beat up most of Slade's assembled supervillains. And now she plans to bring the captured Raptor back to Talia Al Ghul. Raptor, of course, is in interesting as he is both an assassin and a supervillain, but one who ended up backing Slade over Talia. Now where did Slade and Respawn get off to? Well, they're in the catacombs under San Francisco right now. Deathstroke says that he had built a special hideout here back during the days when Titans had their own tower here. Again, hey, points to Joshua Williamson for continuity. It's here too that Respawn and his father actually get a moment together. Keep in mind that Deathstroke was only aware of his existence a couple days ago. Respawn thinks this place is totally awesome and can't wait to play with all the different weapons that Deathstroke has assembled. Slade says that those aren't toys and that taking a life should never be fun or a game. Respawn is quick to fire back, saying it's not like his dad never killed someone with an action figure before, and come on, Deathstroke saying he doesn't love his work? If you're gonna make up a lie to try and sound like a better father, the least you can do is come up with a lie that makes sense. Deathstroke gets hard at work trying to figure out who exactly framed him for racial Al Ghul's murder. The obvious suspect is, of course, Talia herself. Maybe this was some sort of big power grab on her end. But still, though, this whole mystery doesn't seem to make much sense to anyone involved. From there, we transition back on over to Castle Al Ghul not long after Talia and Batman shared a little kiss at the end of the Batman issue. Despite me and other readers actually getting kind of invested in the idea of Bruce and Talia reigniting their romance, eh, they don't. Bruce apparently still loves Selina and all the stuff from from Tom King and Beyond still stands. Geez, I honestly don't know who feels more teased in this situation, Talia in the story or me as the reader. Talia maintains to Batman that she didn't kill her father and that the only reason he was willing to share Lazarus Pit tech with the world is that he hadn't been using it and because of that he was able to gain some sort of mental clarity that he hadn't had in forever, though Talia admits it is strange that her father just one day up and decided to stop using the pits. Obviously, we as the reader know know from listening to Raish's mother, Mother Soul, that the pits may very well be corrupted in some way, but they don't know that yet. Angel Breaker shows up with plans to torture Raptor for information on Deathstroke's whereabouts. Batman steps in to try and defend Raptor, knowing that there's a good chance that Angel Breaker would probably torture him to death, and Batman thinks he can get the very same information out of him without needing to kill him. Raptor, for those who don't know, actually has a rather interesting and close relationship to the Batman. Bat family, he was essentially best friend and adopted brother of Dick Grayson's mother. He infiltrated the Court of Owls at one point and was even involved in the same death tournament that Robin was just a couple arcs back. Batman manages to make just enough commotion for him and Raptor to escape. Talia says to let Batman go, but to follow Raptor, knowing that it's only a matter of time before he tries to get back in contact with Destro. And yeah, Raptor does exactly what Talia says he was going to do the second he thinks he's clear clear of murderous ninjas, he ends up giving Deathstroke a ring, which doesn't make much sense because how does Raptor know where Deathstroke is? And also, shouldn't an assassin supervillain know full well that he's probably being followed right now and that you never call the person who's being looked for right away? In the end, though, assassins prove to not be Deathstroke's biggest problem right now as his secret hideout ends up getting raided by Robin and Ravager. Deathstroke's attempt at being a new, better parent seemingly not ex extending to Rose, who not only always seems to have a bone to pick with her father, but has a bone to pick with Respawn, too, who kicked her out of an open window when she was the one who actually brought him for a reconciliation with Deathstroke in the first place. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to an end, everyone. And so that was Deathstroke, Inc., issue number eight. And all I can say is I'm really glad I decided to record this video right after reading it, because boy, was this a forgettable tie-in story. That's not to say there was anything particular particularly wrong with it, but there wasn't a lot to really recommend either. The characters pretty much know everything they knew at the start of this series. And while it's definitely interesting to get to see Destro try and be a different type of father to Respawn than he was to his other children, basically making up for past sins, it gets so little actual page time to breathe it's almost not worth it. The art is also really uneven, but certainly better than the Batman issue that preceded it. Characters aren't running around looking 
like they're wearing tissue paper and I didn't see any character models getting recycled, so that's good. It's also pretty good news that they dropped this book and the Robin book all in the same week, because if not, this was going to be incredibly thin for Shadow War as a storyline. Overall, though, I'd give this one a 6 out of 10. If you're not already invested in Deathstroke Inc., I could probably say you'd be safe skipping this one, actually. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.